And we are back, the second hour here on uh, Monday. We're uh, getting ready, of course, for test four, which is due today. Wednesday, coming up here in just a couple days. Sorry about that. It's our final, and that's what we're doing here the second hour. Uh, we'll be going through the, the review for that, the sample final, which is on Learning Suite. And remember, the key for the sample final is the last page there. On our final, there will be a data sheet and the periodic table. Uh, homework book challenge, even if you need to spend a lot of time catching up to do that, that's a good exercise, working as many problems. And I need to see your solutions, what, to, the, to all of the even problems at the end of each chapter, those problems at the end. They're broken out into different sections, all the sections, all the evens there. So it's like 30 or so questions uh, each chapter, but that's a great, a great way to get ready here for the final. And, you know, if you're weak on some of those things in 351, look back at those chapters. Your ebook has all those, those previous chapters as well there. All right, let's see here on the overhead. Uh, I've got the files of a lot of materials here that can help you for the final. Uh, these are under content and handouts, I think, on Learning Suite. Yeah, and you can see them there. I've got review topics. Let's look at that first one here. And what we've got there is uh, just all the concepts from 351. And boy, there's a lot, you know. <laughs> what, what are the important things, though, here for that? Well, the Lewis dot structures, you know, and covalent bonds, of course, and valence electrons, all these things, all these topics actually from, from general chemistry, right? And formal charge, being able to, to see where at in resonance structures and Vesper, to know what the geometry of the molecule is. And, of course, curved arrow formalism for the mechanism. So those are all, of course, important things. And then I break it out in the, the topics from 351, alkanes, uh, sp3 hybridization, of course, the names there, the basic ones, uh, branching, properties, um, NMR. That's, of course, a later chapter, but the NMR of, uh, of uh, molecules will be on... <laughs> on the final there. Alkenes, alkynes, of course, sp2 and sp hybridization, different geometries there. And regioselectivity for the reactions. So usually we're doing electrophilic substitution, have an electrophile, pull the pi electrons out, have a carbocation, that can do a lot of different things, right? And then a nucleophile coming in there. Regioselectivity. So this is regular Markovnikov addition. This would be anti-Markovnikov, right? And this is often dictated by the stability of the carbocation intermediate. Okay, so hydration, a typical reaction there. But you see a summary of all the reactions. Stereochemistry, chirality and antimers, uh, non-superimposable mirror plane images, mirror images of each other. It lacks an internal mirror plane or center of symmetry. If those are there, then the molecule we say is achiral, right? even though it might have stereo centers. So meso compounds, a little bit different there. Talk about optical rotations, what racemic means, RNS, of course, properties of that, diastereans, meso compounds are achiral, yet they have stereo centers. So they possess a mirror plane or center of symmetry. So those type of questions are certainly common on ACS finals here. Rings, cycloalkanes, cycloalkenes, Different types of idea there. There we talk about heat of formation and combustion, uh, how stable things are, how much heat's given off there. The more stable something is, the less heat it gives off because it starts out at a lower heat of formation. Even though that might be isomeric with something that has the same number of atoms, right? Gives off the same number of CO2 and water, but because of stability, it will give off less heat, okay? We talked about that with equatorial axial and the chair being, of course, the most important. Halides, sulfides, alcohols, PKAs, Grignard reactions, reagents, that's really 352, okay? But it comes out of the alkyl halides, so it's an extension of that topic, really, from the alkyl halides, where, of course, those are electrophilic to begin with, but with the magnesium, we turn them to a nucleophilic carbanion species, right? So topics to keep straight. And then, you know, substitution, SN1 going through the carbocation, ionization is a slow step. And then the rate does not depend on the concentration of the nucleophile. This is the slow step here. 
Uh, it's unimolecular, we say. Here's the rate expression. It only involves the substrate with the leaving group on it. And then SN2 is the opposite there. It's bimolecular. Charge nucleophiles are typical here. Bimolecular because the two substrates are in the rate expression. And there it's primary and secondary are the fast ones. Whereas here it's tertiary and secondary. So the rates just switch there. Okay, that helps you keep track of it. If the base is bulky and too strong, like TB toxide, that's your typical one. And I guarantee you there'll be TB toxide on the final doing an E2 elimination. E1, forget about it. That's just confusing nonsense. It's not synthetically useful. It fits into the overall mechanistic picture of what's going on but those are never successful reactions, okay? It has to be an ionizing event with a non-nucleophilic solvent involved, and then eventually it just eliminates, okay? So I really downplay E1, but some students like to talk about it, and there are, some, of course, some problems working it. E2, if we want to do an elimination, we add a strong base and we get it done with, okay? We don't wait around for things to ionize under slow conditions. It always gives a mixture anyway. Yeah, and that's more on the E2. And the synthesis, because the different nucleophiles, we can make a whole range of different products there, right? Alkene reactions, electrophilic uh, additions here, like uh, halogenation, and we saw hydration reactions. Now be careful, the carbocations can rearrange. Uh, typical is secondary to tertiary uh, carbocation or primary to secondary to tertiary. Uh, and that depends on the structure. You really need to analyze that. And hydroboration, uh, borane, and then oxidation gives the anti-Markovnikov um, opposite uh, alcohol, the less substituted alcohol. Simple hydration always gives the more substituted alcohol. Okay. Alkenes, alkynes, here's the key reactions. They're all H's, I think. Hydrogenation, halogenation, <laughs> halohydrin formation. But know those reactions, right? Reactivity. Everything comes down to structure first, right? That's your primary understanding of OCHEM. The second thing is reactivity. What reagents give what type of products? And then your third level of understanding is mechanism. And all three of those things tie together when we talk about uh, organic chemistry. So other reactions, oxymercuration, I didn't talk about that. That shows up on some ACS exams. It won't be on ours, don't worry. There will be epoxides on ours, though. We can make epoxides from MCBA, PBA, metachloroperbenzoic acid, or any per acid for that matter. And then epoxides are what? Can undergo nucleophilic attack at the less substituted side if it's what? A charged nucleophile. If it's under aqueous acidic conditions, we protonate first and open up and form the more substitute carbocation. And often that regioselectivity switches, okay? Ozone, molecular scissors, breaks both the pi bond and the sigma bond of alkenes to go to carbonyls. Additions of alkynes follow very similarly, although there's often a tautomerization of an enol product, okay? And the Linlar, half reduction to give the cis alkenes or the reduction of sodium and ammonia to give the trans alkene. <clears throat> and I'll of course go through different examples of these on the board here in a second. I'm just showing you some of the uh, resource materials. So all these are in that one file on uh, topics, 351 <laughs> topics, uh, NMR, and there'll be a data sheet with this type of graphic there to help you remember uh, proton shifts but splitting the n plus one rule, how many neighbors show up there? And that's the multiplicity that you'll show up. So if you have two neighbors uh, for a given methylene, let's say, uh, you'll have it show up as a triplet splitting pattern. If there are three neighbors, if you're alpha to a methyl group, it'll show up as a quartet. So simple patterns will help you make choices uh, on those type of problems, I think. Uh, radical reactions, this is chapter 15. Uh, these all involve chain mechanisms where we initiate a radical, and then we can do alkane halogenation here. We can do allylic halogenation with NBS or bromine, and we can do radical-based polymerization with a uh, peroxide or light-triggered uh, initiation here. And the polymers just zip together there. We don't have any other reagent present. If we have HBr and peroxide, we get the anti-Markovnikov product. That's because we generate the more substituted uh, radical carbon uh, species.
And yeah, I think that's it for 351 there. Let's see, uh, reaction review 351. These graphics are a little more straightforward, I think. You can uh, look through these as much as you need here. This graphic shows the uh, all the different types of isomers, right? Identical, constitutional, conformational, <laughs> the antimers, diastereomers, asking kind of a flow chart, decision chart here. And then a lot of examples that can help you uh, remember that. Here's the reactions in graphical form. SN2, very common, very useful, mainly with primary and secondary. If it is secondary, it inverts the stereocenter, okay? Uh, SN1, you need to have more substitute leaving group because of the carbocation intermediate, okay? So uh, E2 with TP toxide being typical there, but if it is tertiary, even sodium hydroxide can do a lot of E2. It depends on, on the uh, structure and the conditions there. TB toxide always, even with primary, gives uh, elimination. Okay, <laughs> So it's so bulky, it, it can't do the backside attack. Secondary, of course, elimination. Zaitsev's rule, the more stable alkene, more substitute alkenes form. Uh, less substituted, this is the Hoffman elimination. We didn't really talk about that, and it's a different type of mechanism, E1CB mechanism. So that probably won't be on our test. Don't worry about that. You can also form tosylate leaving groups, or you can form an, from an alcohol to a bromide, either with HBr or PBr3. PBr3 is nice because no rearrangements, whereas HBr will give you rearrangements before it will substitute. You can also form the alkoxide with strong base, sodium hydride or sodium amide, or just sodium metal will take an alcohol to the sodium uh, alkoxide nucleophile. So these are good SN2 nucleophiles, right? You add that there, you get a backside attack and give, a, give an ether, diethyl ether product. Decision chart for the mechanism SN2, SN1, E2, E1. And that's here, and that we're linking the structure with the conditions, with the reagents. So that's a tricky thing for students. You gotta examine both, right? But there are typical conditions here that give you uh, SN2, for example, right? If it's primary, secondary, yeah. And if it's a charged nucleophile that's not too basic, always SN2. SN1 maybe, uh, you know, if it's tertiary there, even if it's charged, that's kind of a gray area, you'd say. But the typical ones are right here, right? TB toxide, look at that, all elimination, except with methyl. Methyl, you can't do an elimination, right? That's the only example, methyl iodide or bromide, where TB toxid will do SN2. All the others, primary, secondary, tertiary, are all elimination and, and quite fast, okay? Strong nucleophile, but not too big. Then you can start to get kind of a mixture of SN2, uh, E2. The archetypical areas are the ones we'll ask you about. If it's a gray area example, we'll give you some extra data that might help you uh, then decide there. But uh, And then neutral conditions here. Solvolysis reactions, these are uh, fast there with tertiary, or sometimes you get a mixture with the E1, uh, SN, SN1 secondary there, uh, and no reaction if it's primary with a, a neutral. Those are stable there. Anyway, uh, you can look through that. Typical out reactions here with halides at the bottom and alcohols at the top, okay? So that helps you review those two questions there. This is all 351 reaction review here. You could say here's all the electrophilic additions. Some of these we have not covered like cyclopropanation. That won't be on your test there. Or oxymercuration. Where is that? Uh, I don't know. But the os osmium, of course, the diol reaction. Epoxides, halogen, hydroboration, anti-Markovnikov. Yeah. Rearrangements. Yeah. If you're under cationic conditions here and you have branching, that's what you always look for for rearrangements if they're branching. Here you go from secondary to a tertiary carbocation first. Give that product. Stereochemistry is always important. And this is linked to the structural idea, right? So uh, osmium tetroxide forms a dial on the same face. These two alcohols would both be up or down, right? This is chiral, so it'd be a mixture of those enantiomers. Hydroboration, boron will go to the less substituted side. It puts hydride at the more substituted side. And then it oxidizes with the retention of stereochemistry with peroxide. So the alcohol and the methyl are trans to each other. Why? Because the boron and the hydrogen came on the same face together, okay? 
Here's halohydrin formation. The alcohol came from water, which attacked the tertiary carbocation. The bromonium ion bridges the two sides, and then water attacks the more substance side. Why? Because that's where more of the charge would be, right? And then halogenation is always anti there because chloronium ion bridges both, and then the chloride anion comes in from the top or the bottom uh, to, to open it up, so it's the trans product there. Poxized reactions, I mentioned some of these. Depending on the conditions, you can get diol formation where the stereochemistry is mixed here because it goes through a carbocation. Here also it goes through a carbocation, mixed stereochemistry, but notice that methyl, methoxide, is at the more substitute spot. Why? Because that's where the tertiary carbocation was. That's where the methanol solvent attacked. This came from the epoxide as it was broken open there. Okay. Sodium hydroxide, different story. Here's a charge nucleophile attacking the less substitute side and breaking the epoxide open. So that's an anti-attack. And so you see the anti-dial there. There the stereochemistry is well-defined. Not here, because that's uh, the, epo the epoxide through the carbocation. And then same thing here with the Grignard reagent or LAH at the less substitute side. Uh, here you can't tell. This gives an achiral product, right? Because it's just hydride out in there. But here, the alkyl magnesium bromide adds anti to the epoxide at the less substitute spot. Then you need to protonate. So we just have the water work up with these strong organometallic reagents, right? Alkyne reactions are very similar there, except for the tautomerization and uh, the different complementary conditions to give the cis product, the trans product. Radical reactions, I just mentioned some of those. So they are in graphical form. Uh, generally, the bromination is far more selective. That has to do with the endothermic transition states there for bromination. All the steps in the chain are exothermic for chlorine. Carbon-chlorine bonds are more stable. So there you generally give a mixture. If you use light, uh, then you can limit it and just give mono uh, halogenation. BR2 or NBS gives the allylic bromination because the allylic radical is the stable thing here. Anti-Markovnikov addition forms the uh, oxygen radical first, takes off hydrogen atom, gives bromine radical, which adds to the N carbon. That's the electrophile in that case going on the end. And then the radicals at the two position. And then it propagates from that point. And then it grabs a hydrogen atom off HBr, and then it's radical all intermediates from there. So HBr on its own, if you didn't have the radical initiation, you'd just give bromide at the two position here, right? So those are complementary conditions, we say, for, for hydrogen bromide addition, either Markovnikov, or anti-Markovnikov radical. And if you don't have any other reagent in there, you'll just initiate and then form a radical and then it just zips together, right? So you have polyethylene, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride, and polystyrene, if there's alternating phenyl groups on there. Um, yeah, so I think that's the reactions for 351. I think I got reactions for 352 also on here. Where are they? There they are, 352 reactions. So <laughs> these two sheets are complementary that way. It's got the two semesters there. We started with the diene reactions, right? The deals alder. This one is a birch reduction. I think there's a problem on the sample final that talks about the birch reduction of benzene to the 1,4 cyclohexadiene. That won't be on our test. I did not cover it this time. It's not in your book, so. But benzylic halogenation is and benzylic oxidation. Any chain here, as long as it's not a tertiary branch thing on the benzene, can be oxidized with chromic acid or uh, potassium permanganate, right? And then here's our five electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. You should know those very well. Yes, those will be on the final. And activators, orthopara versus meta deactivators. You should know that now. And then combining with the diazonium reactions from chapter... 25, the amines, right? We can take uh, nitrous acid here and form the aryl diazonium salt. And then the different nucleophiles and the mechanisms vary here depending on how, what they are. But they're definitely not SN2 or SN1. They're actually associative mechanisms, which can be quite complicated. Uh, or you can add an electron-rich benzene here and get the diazo dye material. So those are all new reactions in chapter, our chapter 25, I think. No benzene, 
Uh, it is discussed in your book. We didn't have time to get to it. We did do nucleophilic aromatic substitution. If you have a leaving group like fluoride or tosylate, and then you have to have at least one nitro group here, which is what? Attracting a charged nucleophile to come in and attack, push the electrons around. It's this associative mechanism. You have an allylic uh, anion then that's stabilized by the nitro group. Then you push those electrons back out and kick off fluoride or the leaving group. You see that gives a substitution product. And it, ipso substitution means it's on the same carbon as the leaving group. Ipso substitution is also for electrophilic aromatic substitution, but there we're substituting for what? A hydrogen comes off as a proton, right? Different mechanism. Then we got all our ketone aldehyde <laughs> additions. There's your Wittig reaction, your hydrate, cyanohydrin. We didn't do bisulfate, but we certainly did the acetals and hemiacetals, right? And we did imines if it's a primary mean. Secondary mean, it's an enamine, different mechanism, a little bit different. Same in minium ion intermediate. And then, of course, the organometallic additions there. Grignards are very versatile, depending on what type of carbonyl is being added here. Cuprates do the conjugate additions, or they can also do uh, uh, SN2 reactions on alkyl halides. I just mentioned that. They can also substitute aromatic leaving groups. And that's not an SM2, it's an associative mechanism. So cuprates, if we had time to do chapter 29, the organometallics, we would have done a little bit more on that. Reductions, of course, and oxidations uh, will be on the final. Enols, enolates, we've got alpha halogenation, iodoform, alkylation with LDA being typical here. And that's the kinetic uh, strong base where we form the less substituted enolate. So we've got selectivity there. We got our aldol, low temperature, higher temperature. We got the aldol condensation. So I try to be very clear about that. Mixed aldols you can do there. Uh, Robinson annulation, the most complicated mechanism. It's not shown there. Dithionines, we did not cover that, although sometimes it is. Uh, manic reactions, we did not cover that, although I think that was in a homework problem. That forms an aminium ion. That's the electrophile with an enol and you get that type of product. So you can actually go through that and figure that mechanism out based on what we've already covered, okay? Uh, same with the Canizero. That's actually similar to the iodoform reaction, but we won't do that. We won't do the mirwine pondorf Verle. So sometimes these type of reactions and mechanisms are added as extra or harder problems, but we give you some hints there, including the products, okay? But certainly all these ester reactions, the clasin, the decamon, the intramolecular, and mixed clasin, these can be tricky. Again, you need to figure out which one does not have any alpha hydrogens. That's the one that can only function as what? The electrophile. This one can be the electrophile or the nucleophile, right? Form the enolate there. There's the partner there. Okay? And then you're under basic conditions. You have to have at least two alpha hydrogens on the nucleophilic part. Why? Because you've got to deprotonate this one and give that stabilized enolate. And then the dilute acid is needed to protonate at the end, okay? We had acetoacetate, which involves heating with acid, does the decarboxylation, loss of CO2 in both cases. And yeah, Bayer Villiger we did not get to. Darn, that's a fun mechanism. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. Carboxylic acid derivatives. A lot of these, of course, acid chlorides are the most useful things here. You can make it from thionyl chloride. And then you can make all the other ones. And these are just nucleophiles, all the same kind of thing, right? Tetrahedral intermediate. And here you have a good leaving group, okay? So that's why the hierarchy of the stability and reactivity here. Amides are less reactive, most stable ones because of the extensive resonance stabilization and how poor that is as a leaving group, okay? N minus is not a <laughs> leaving group because that's a very strong base, okay? Alkoxide can be a leaving group because that's not nearly as strong a base as amide anion, okay? So those basic ideas you should be able to keep straight. And then other nucleophiles adding here, I think are fine. And then the amine reactions, we just recently did those. So Hoffman, some people have asked about that. That is on ACS exam, sometimes the less substituted alkene products, but we didn't, we didn't cover that this time. But certainly we did the Gabriel reductive thing. We, we did we did this, of course, the amide of aniline. Remember, no fruital crafts uh, with, with aniline, or if you try to nitrate or sulfonate under acidic conditions with aniline, 
uh, it becomes a deactivator. Why? Because it's protonated. It's basic enough with strong acid to be an anilonium cation. That changes things, okay? Then the diazonium reactions again there are summarized, I think. Uh, organometallics, that's 29. We did not cover that. I mentioned this one. Sometimes these are on final. Oh, I mentioned that one too. But cyclopropanations, no. Carbohydrates, a lot there. We just covered. There's a summary of the different reactions, the Fisher thing. We summarized the uh, DNA. Uh, on our final, you know, we're not going to go into translation, transcription, and the details of those metabolic pathways, although we can ask you about individual steps in glycolysis and citric acid cycle as they relate to the fundamental reactions, but not a big thing on, on translation, you know, which peptide comes from which sequence. So you don't need the codon chart there to do that. For that quiz 10, which is due today, you need the codon chart, okay, which is in the graphics uh, from that handout for, for metabolism. Or you can find the codon chart anywhere on the internet, but for the final, uh, you, you won't need that. If it's on test four, uh, we would give you the codon chart, but it's highly unlikely. We just wanted to show you how it works on that quiz there. So, so yeah, don't worry about that part of it. But the reactions for individual amino acids, certainly. Uh, peptide synthesis, certainly. And those are all summarized right there for you. And I think that's it there on that. Is there any more thing I wanted to talk about? Core principles, topics, maybe. Now let's get to the board and go through the, well, let's click through the sample final maybe. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we will get to the board, work a couple problems here. But the sample final, again, the key for this is the last sheet. Sorry, we just kind of cobbled these together, Dr. Nielsen and I about 10 years ago. These are old AC ex exams, which they weren't protecting anymore. So we put them on here and, uh, you know, it covers all the topics, 70 questions. So similar type of format, always just A through D, the same way we've been uh, talking about here. Uh, let me just see which ones I think might be uh, here. I think number three is a little bit tricky. Uh, heats of combustion, isomeric hydrocarbons measure stabilities. Why? Because they give different final states? No, they give the same if they're isomers. They have the same empirical formula. So they give the same amount of CO2 and water. Uh, they give the same final states. Okay. Uh, the answer, uh, yeah. And so they give that those same products. So B is actually correct. And D is correct too because the isomeric starting materials have different potential energies, different heats of formation. And, and there, the more substituted alkenes are more stable and the more branched hydrocarbons are more stable, okay? So that, that lets you use combustion to figure out which is more stable there. Uh, let's see this one. So these reaction schemes, we can you know have individual reactions or a few reactions. Uh, in sequence there, like five, uh, three is the, the correct answer there. So C there. Uh, ionic bonding here um, is uh, part of the folded up state. This, this is a tricky problem because hydrogen bonding here can be in the secondary structures, the alpha helices, beta sheets, and also in the folded up state between the groups with the chains once they're folded up. Ionic bonding are these salt bridges that really show up in the folded state, okay? So I think C is the answer there, tertiary structure. Quaternary structure can have all those too, but hydrogen bonding and ionic and what, disulfide linkages are functions of the tertiary structure, okay? So yeah, they could have added that one in there too. Okay. Um, We've got uh, one, two addition here at the low temperature. So that's okay there. Here you just got to map on to the carbons and the epoxide opening up once you form the, the bromide there. It's not too bad. So the answer there is uh, three again. So C. Here's a transition state. Right here, we're protonating an alkene to give the tertiary carbocation. So that's Markovnikov protonation with HCl. It's drawn a little bit funny. That's not how I draw transition states. I draw the curved arrow. So this is HCl, 
grabbing that. It's kind of confusing. So that is the slow step that's going to the intermediate C, which is the carbocation. So what's drawn here is actually the transition state, B, with the partial charges. I would have done it personally with the curved arrow. Okay. Yeah. Then we got an NMR problem here. This one could be a little tricky, you might say. Broad singlet that looks like an alcohol. You've got alcohols here and here, yeah, okay, or a singlet, yeah, broad and singlet due to hydrogen bonding on alcohols. The triplet at around two and then a triplet at three, both for two hydrogens. So those are two methylenes, right? This one's pretty far downfield. It's close to four. So that's alpha to an oxygen. And you've got a couple there. This ether is alpha to that oxygen, but this doesn't have the broad singlet, okay? So there's other things you need to look at. Examine all the data on these NMR questions. So 2.7 and, and 3.7, that's really more consistent with this type of structure here. We have the two methylenes. And alpha to the oxygen is going to be the one around four. Okay, It's more electronegative. Alpha to an aromatic is usually two, two and a half. So that's more consistent with this, these benzylic hydrogen. And then this really nails it down. Seven and seven and a half, two hydrogens each, and they're different sets. So that rules this out. That's five. Okay. This one here kind of matches that. You know, two next to the chloride, more electronegative. Those, those might be the 7.5. And there's two there. Okay. So those two kind of consistent with both of those. But this one's a tertiary alcohol. That pattern right there would be what? Quartet and the methyl group would be a doublet. So that's not correct here. Okay. These are both triplets, they're saying. And that's consistent here and here. And then the aromatic's consistent here. So examine all aspects of it and, and look carefully at the splitting patterns, right? And here they're giving you a line listing of the spectra, or we could give you the full graphic of the proton NMR, right? And there you'd have to look at the multiplicities and examine it. So a couple of different ways. Anyway, I think uh, three there, again, kind of common here. C appears to be the common answer, at least for these harder ones I'm pointing out. Uh, here's a TB toxide after you uh, form a, a leaving group there, which is with the bromide. And I try to draw my multi-step things a little more clear. Uh, and, I, and I don't like mixing one, two, three, four with A, B, C, D. That seems kind of uh, redundant there. But that's how they did it in the old days on the ACS exam. Anyway, you get the information. Here, this is a tricky one. Carbonate with a Grignard. <laughs> this, this is actually going to go to a tertiary alcohol. So, and it's with the excess. And you actually have to add three equivalents of Grignard there. So this is the substrate carbonates we did not cover, but you can figure it out there. It's not, not too bad. And I go to the board. Maybe I'll show you that one. Let's move ahead here to 24, I think. This one. Yeah, this could be a little bit tricky. A hydrocarbon, they say. C20H30. Well, that's already a lot lower than the amount of maximum hydrogens you'd have, right? So it can be hydrogen, hydrogenated to give uh, C20H38, and that's even less than the maximum. What's the maximum for C20? Right, it's 2N plus 2 for the number of hydrogens. So that would be, what, 42 hydrogens would be the max. So you've lost two units of unsaturation going from 42 down to 38. But hydrogenation, excess here, will hydrogenate all the alkenes. But what else can contribute to a unit of unsaturation? Right, it's the number of rings. So it turns out here the only outcome here that's consistent with this data is that the max would have been C20H42, but you start at 38, so there must have been two rings already present. And then what? From 30 or 38 down to 30, that's what? Four units of unsaturation for the alkenes because it's what? Two hydrogens per alkene, right? So 38 minus 30, so that's what? Four double bonds, so that's A. So there, use your scratch paper right? And come up with some ideas there. You use all the scratch paper you want and examine all the data, but that one you can easily uh, get a little confused there, I think, on, on that one. Let's see, moving ahead. And like I said, we'll have time to go to the board here in a couple of these. Ah, this one. Strong acidic solution, lysine primarily 
Dication show below as the pH is raised, which means what? If you raise the pH, are you making it more acidic or more basic? Yeah, more basic, right? And that means you're going to start to take off protons. And which one's going to come off first? Here it's in the all protonated form. This would be uh, like at pH, what, one or two for lysine. We're all protonated. We're protonated there. And that gives the neutral carboxylic acid protonated here and here. Lysine has the basic side chain here. The pKa, if you remember some of these, it's always good. pKa of a carboxylic acid, the amino acid is what? Around two, two and a half. Ammonium cation here is about nine, nine and a half. And then the ammonium group here on an alkyl amine is a little bit higher. It's about 10. So that's your more basic site. The next most basic site is here. And then the least basic is, of course, the carboxylate, right? So as you start to raise the pH, which comes off first? Well, the one with the lowest pKa, and that would be this one. So the first one you take off around uh, pH 3 would be this one. And then you'd have what? A plus 2 cation, okay? Uh, which proton is lost to form the model cation? Well, it would be this one eventually, okay? And that would be the next most acidic one. And that would give you the mono cation then. Of course, this one would already be lost. And then you'd have the uh, neutral form here. So what's the correct answer? It's B, OK? Because the two position is the one, oh, the first one to come off to form the mono cation. Now, now that's confusing, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure I like this question. <laughs> To, as the pH is raised, which proton is lost first? Maybe that should be all said there, because as this one comes off, it's not a monocation. It's actually a dication. <laughs> okay, you see what, what's confusing there about B being the correct answer that's shown there. But what actually spot-wise produces the monocation is actually loss of that one, okay? which would be that one. So I don't, I don't know. This one, <laughs> uh, I would have worded this hopefully a little more clearly. Okay. But the PKAs, you should have a rough idea there. You know, two and a half, nine versus 10. Okay. Most basic, next basic, least basic. Most acidic, next most acidic, and then least acidic. Okay. That's the way to look at that one, I think. Um, the others are okay. So yeah, knowing PKAs in a couple spots is always important. Terminology, terpenes, sometimes we talk about that. How many C5 units, which is a, a hemiterpene unit. A terpene actually has 10. So a diterpene would have how many C5 units? Actually four. The correct answer is D. Sorry, this one's showing E. That's not typical of ACS exams now or ours, okay? There's that birch reduction here on 38. We did not cover that, so don't worry about that one. Not covered. And this cyclopropanation right here, we did not cover that. Okay. Here, this reaction certainly opening up the epoxide here and then keeping that stereocenter. That stereocenter is what? Uh, uh, I think it's S, and that stereocenter will still be S in the product. So that's, uh, that's A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 40 there. Um, help, helps to know your PKAs here. And, you know, you, you should have memorized, you know, of course, carboxylic acids and ammonium cations. And then the others you can kind of figure out, right? Alcohols around 16. Uh, terminal acetylenes, 25. Let, let's you figure this one out. If these are 16 and this is 25, what you're going to be going in this direction. So starting materials are actually favored in... Uh, in C there. Which one? There's one more that has starting material favorite. It's this one here. Okay. This is a stronger base than that because the pKa of an alcohol is 16. pKa of an ammonium cation is 9, right? So here the direction is going here to the left on E there. Um, chairs here. If you draw the chair here, this terpetal group, methyl and ethyl, all of these are cis, which means in the chair they're all equatorial. So here you need to draw out the chairs for these, all these, and the answer is A there. I think that's pretty clear. This one's a little tricky, except if you recognize a couple things here. It's B and C. Uh, they're diastereomers of each other because this one's cis, this one's trans, right? Here, this one's trans. These are enantiomers of each other, A and C. 
And then here it's gem dimethyl, they're on the same carbon. So this, these are constitutional isomers to all those. Knowing the relationship, oh, squalene, look at that. There's the head to head connection that we talked about, the isoprene unit. That's the, or, or sorry, tail to tail, right? Tail to tail, it should be C. Yeah, C, tail to tail. The head part's closer to the methyl group. So you can kind of see those. Uh, which ones are isomers? Uh, I think A through C are all constitutional isomers. This one has uh, less hydrogens, right? A lot less hydrogens. So D is a uh, it's not an isomer of these three. This one, sorry, the graphic doesn't show up very well. <laughs> this is uh, where the methyl group is actually S and where this alcohol is, it's actually R. Uh, on, yeah, maybe on the board I'll show you that, but my, my graphics would show up better. So uh, you'd be able to see that. But anyway, this methyl group's actually up and this alcohol is actually up right there. Here's an example of a Robinson annulation, I think, where it's the answer is this one here, one. And you have the aldol condensation right here, and then you have the conjugate addition right there. Okay, So it is a Robinson because it's a conjugate addition, a Michael followed by an aldol. Those are a little bit tricky to see. Oh, and they're using a different base there, which is maybe different, but they're showing you the products, Okay, how things can arise. Um, Let's see, epoxide openings. Uh, we need to go to the board to do that one. And that, that's always, you know, use, use structural stuff. Here, this one, toluene can get oxidized first to benzoic acid. And then that's what a meta director. So it'd be a three there or C there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let me just go ahead here. Uh, this one here, pariodate cleavage of a dial. I think that's just mentioned in 351. Can't remember if I actually covered it. Pariodate uh, will take a, a vicinal diol and go to the carbonyls. Okay, so you need that to, to figure that one out. Basicity one. Oh, this one's a little tricky here. All of these will give the same type of product because of the shifting effect going on there. But this one will give a primary carbocation here and then shift here to put an ethyl group up here with a tertiary carbocation. So it eliminates they'll have an alkene with an ethyl actually on it. So that one, if you work with the scratch paper, I think you can see it. This one ties in with that first one we talked about, the heat of hyd hydrogenation. There you need to analyze it. And it's this bottom one here has the more substitute alkenes and it's it's conjugated. They're one, two, to one, four to each other. So that has the conjugation, which lowers the, the heat of formation more and gives you more stability. So when it hydrogenates, you see it, it gives the lowest amount of heat there. The other ones are less stable and give out more heat when they hydrogenate. Yeah, naming, and there's another cleavage reaction there, I think. Yeah, we're almost done. I'll go to the board here a little bit. Um, tautomerization after you hydrate alkynes, yeah. And make sure you do the Markovnikov hydration the proton going on to the end, and then water, and then tautomerized to the ketone. In this case, it's acetone. So the correct answer there is A, uh, one for acetone, I think. Uh, yeah, we showed the synthesis of aspirin. So 68 is a little bit tricky there. It's called the Colby-Schmidt reaction, but uh, it's like an enolate there. And your electrophile is actually CO2. OK, yeah. And the last one, oh, and that's a, what, malonic ester synthesis one. And at the end, you do the decarboxylation because there's heat, right? That will give you the carboxylic acid, which you form the acid chloride, the thionyl chloride, and then form the uh, amine, the amide there with, with ammonia. So you'll form, I think, uh, compound two there, right? B is the correct answer there. And there's the answer key there. Uh, yeah, that birch reduction, that one, we don't, we don't know there. Okay, so yeah, don't worry about that. All right, so let's go to the board a little bit here. We got, we got some time. Um, go through some of uh, the trickier reactions, pKa's and structure, of course, you need to know there. Uh, SN2, E2, of course, very common. 
let's do a little bit on this one. So if you take an alkene like this and do osmium tetroxide, you're going to form the dial, right? Which dial is it going to be? Well, it's going to come in on the same face, so it's going to form this. Uh, are those stereocenters or not? Let's see. Yeah, those are stereocenters. There's four different groups there. Which one am I drawing here? That's indeed the S, and this is the S, right? Well, you'll also form what? The RR from the back side coming in, okay? Well, what about the RS, though? Okay, so this is combining stereochemistry, right, with the mechanism. The mechanism's osmium tetroxide coming in on the same phase. So you got to remember some of the mechanisms here, right? As that comes in, push the electrons in, and this goes on there, and it forms an osmate ester, which hydrolyzes with water, and the water just adds there to knock off the osmium and, and put protons on there. The stereocenters are formed at the initial osmate step. Let's compare that with the cisalkene, same conditions. Well, what are we going to get here? Well, we're going to get that same syn addition, right? But here, we're going to get the S. And what's that stereocenter? Oh, that's indeed the R. Okay. And what type of molecule is that then? You see the mere plane relationship there. Yeah, that's meso. That's a chiral. Whereas this one, you get the DL, the plus minus pair. Okay. So that's that's a little bit tricky. We'll we'll see a similar thing I'll review here with epoxides in a second. I think I've got that uh, coming up. Yeah, NMR, IR, UV, if it's highly conjugated polyenes, those tend to have the higher lambda maxes, which is the lower energy. That lowers the gap between the homo and the lumo. Uh, data sheet will be on the exam. Yeah, periodic table. Let's see, uh, cuprates conjugate addition. I think that's fine. Where's my epoxide one? Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's take the same reactions here with the epoxides. So MCPBA. MCPBA, if we epoxidize here, we can form this epoxide, right? And what are the stereocenters there? Let's see, can we assign R and S here? I think we can. Uh, <laughs> That one is S, okay, and this one is uh, also S, okay. <laughs> and we'll also form what? This one, which has uh, the RR stereocenter, okay. So that's that's uh, that's from uh, from that one there. Uh, let's open this up with uh, hydroxide, okay. So if we open up with hydroxide, do the backside attack here. What are we going to get? We're going to get this maintained here as the S right here. And this will get inverted, right? Oh, we'll go to the R, okay? Well, what compound is that now? <laughs> R, S in the same molecule, and you can't see it. You can rotate around here if you need to and form a different uh, confirmation of that, right? And there you would see what? You'd see the two stereocenters R and S which means what? It's meso, right? It's achiral now, <laughs> okay? And you get the same thing here if you open up there, right? You'll get one of these RR stereocenters. Doesn't matter, either side, you'll get the RS meso. But look, if we epoxidize here, what do we get? We get this. Now that's achiral, right? And it is a meso compound. We can look at the two uh, stereocenters here, which is this. This is uh, S. And this is R here. Yeah, let's make sure. This would be top priority, second priority, uh, third priority there on that. Yep, that is indeed R. Okay. Uh, but because of the symmetry there, it's a chiral. It's meso. But let's open this guy up. Let's open it up with hydroxide, backside attack. What are we going to get? We're going to maintain that stereocenter, the S1 here. And we're going to get what? We're going to get that one now as S, okay? And what is this now? This, we can redraw that one. And what do we get? We get S and S, which would be flipped around there. So if we rotate around there, you know, that's still S, right? But let's see, we could have added 
over here, right? And which one we would have gotten in that case? We would have gotten the uh, the uh, R uh, R. Oh, there it is, right there. Okay, I didn't need to redraw it. <laughs> but here we're doing this reaction from from that addition there. Okay. So you need to examine that uh, and, and look at that. If we have the trans alkene up here with osmium tetroxide, we give the chiral product. If we have the cis alkene here with osmium tetroxide, look, we get the A chiral product. But if we have the trans alkene here and form uh, the epoxide, look, we get the chiral epoxides here, which is similar to the diols out there. But then if we open up, look, we get meso here now. Whereas here we ended up with the chiral alcohols, right? And then if we take the cis here, we energially get the meso. And then if we open up, okay, we're inverting another stereocenter. So that's why we have this relationship. We get the meso. I think that's a trickier topic and similar things come up on the uh, exam uh, quite readily there. Uh, chair cyclohexanes are always common on finals. So let's look at a couple of those. And the one on the sample test was, you know, which one will be the most stable form here? And I think it was shown like this. It had a tert butyl here, and it had an ethyl here and a methyl here. This is the correct answer. So I'll just analyze that one and see why it is. So let's do the chair here, and let's pick a position here on it. Let's have that uh, in the up position. And then uh, here we have the methyl up there, and here we have the ethyl up there, okay? So use your scratch paper and figure that out. They're all cis to each other, but because they're all equatorial, that was the most stable one. So yeah, examining those I think is a good thing. Let me just look real quickly through the rest of the reaction. Deals alder, don't worry about the endo rule so much. It's mainly just which diene with which dienophile. That'll be okay. Um, yeah. Hydroboration, no shifting. Uh, PBR3, no shifting, even if it's branched. And yeah, I think that's okay. And the aldol and the clazin, you know, we just covered those. So I don't think I need to review anything there. Decarboxylation, yep. And then the sugar stuff, the Strecker synthesis, that's a little tricky for the amino acid uh, formation there, but. Uh, uh, I think there's a problem on the worksheet where I show you that mechanism there. So I think we're okay. Very good. Good luck on the final. Make sure you get that uh, uploaded by Wednesday there and you should be fine. Uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, we'll have recitation and office hours. So I hope you're able to study enough and ask us some specific questions on that. and We'll help you out with that. So very good. We'll see you uh, tomorrow.